good morning everybody it's monday morning i've just dropped jennifer off at nursery i've got a nice hot cup of tea right here um and i'm getting ready for work it won't let me in okay try again i'm just logging on my computer uh we will be going down to my mum's later because jennifer wants to um just to chill out for an afternoon gives paul a break gives him some peace and quiet to finish his shift even though we don't finish the form we're back long before then it gives him a couple hours of peace and quiet extra before she comes home and starts causing havoc i had another sale last night i've got three to pull i haven't pulled them i meant to do it yesterday but we were all just so wrecked i don't know why anyway i better get logged in and i will see you when i finish work not a lot of work going on here at the moment because the network's down so nobody can get logged in or it'll log in but it won't let you connect to the phones it looks like it's a major incident across the entire network because it, it's not just me it's absolutely everybody's having issues with it so it's probably across the whole of the company it's just one of those things that happens um it hasn't happened for a while to be fair i mean i never really have any problems with my my kit so it's just one of those things that happens so we just can constantly um Relog in. They've actually had to switch our lines off and put an IVR to say there's technical t issues and that well, it'd be to send an email, but there's technical issues with that as well. So. <laughs> yes, I um, mean we'd have the same. Probably would have the same problem in the office if we were in the office. Apart from if it's the remote issue, obviously we wouldn't have that because we would be logged directly in. But we're not going back to the office anytime soon. Not until I don't think we'll be back until that vaccine's been rolled out everywhere. And then as people have the vaccine and it's successful on them, then they can probably go back in safely. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to try and log back in for the fifth time now to see if it's going to connect. Apparently we've just got to keep trying. It's been raised with tech. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. <laughs> Great start to a Monday morning. Wonderful. So it's, it's bedtime. John, Paul, John? Paul's just gone up to bed. It's like having a Beatles in his head. Jennifer's asleep. She has a lot of digging in Grandad's garden. Got covered in it. Didn't want to sleep this afternoon, so we watched a lot of TV and cuddled. It was nice. I packed my three items. I've listed five items. Oh, he's got Judy Garland and Liza Minnelli. I've got that on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm watching Recordology. Um, I'm going to pretty much call it a day. I'm going to go upstairs and photograph six items, and I'm going to make a video. But I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye, guys. Hi, everyone. It is Tuesday. It's Tuesday lunchtime. I've just come down to pick up Jen. It is great. It's been raining. Um, the car's wet. And it is grey and miserable today absolutely horrendous so i finished my work for the day and i'm gonna pick her up have some lunch and then see how she feels and to uh, do something i've got to try and do some ebay today get some stuff ready to list tonight and then i'll be doing some photographing tonight i'm still trying to finish my picture that i'm doing for the arteza video it's nearly done um yes yeah, so it won't be long so i'm gonna go get jen and then we'll see what happens next see you in a bit hi everyone it's actually wednesday morning i didn't vlog at all yesterday just totally forgot not a lot happened. Played with Jennifer, had a doze, did a bit of colouring, played with Jennifer again. She went to bed about seven. She went to bed early and she was out, slept all night, which is good. Paul watched the football. I did some eBay, did some colouring, that's it. I'm currently having a look for a laptop on the Black Friday deals because my laptop's got hard drive errors, which means it's on its way out. I guess if it's got to go, Black Friday is the time to go, so I'm having a look at the deals on Amazon at the moment. Um, just see what I can pick up. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, a really fast one, it's not for gaming, it is literally for eBay and video editing. And the one I've got is not over powerful, but it does the job, so something similar to that will do me. I am tired. I had a good night's sleep though, which is the main thing. So I haven't had any more sales on eBay, um, but I have started listing again now. So hopefully things will start picking up a bit. As long as, I, like I said at the moment, as long as I hit fees, I don't care. It's been a weird year. It's all over the place. So as long as I hit my fees every month, that's all that matters. Um, I'm making a little bit of money, nothing major. I am in profit, uh, only a little bit, but that's better than not being in profit. So I'm going to get myself set up for work because it's almost work time. Again, at least it's Wednesday, peak of the week. Hooray! And um, I'll see you hopefully after I finish. We're going to Mum's sausage and chips for lunch today. Uh, I've got to get the chicken out. I'll just see how Paul to get it out. I am not doing very well. We're getting food out in the mornings. I keep forgetting. Anyway, I'll see you later. Finished work and as you can hear we're watching Peppa Pig. Oh, the joys. Jennifer likes it, don't you? Is that you? Yeah. 
I am just editing together a flip through of the Burlex special, Colour in Heaven, and Colouring in the Zodiac issue, because I still haven't that. Not a lot going on, a lot of playing, a lot of Jennifer watching TV, aren't you? Mm. Your mummy's girl. Mm. <laughs> all right, all my viewers do not want to see your mouth, dear. And your tongue. Mummy's girl, ain't you? Mm. Eh? Daddy's turn. Well, daddy's over there working. I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna stick his tongue out. Well, that was fun. Okay, so it's uh, Wednesday. Is it still Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday night. Again, I haven't done much today. Um, I have ordered a new laptop. The other laptop seems to be all right now. The hard drive seems to have repaired itself. It's very bizarre. But it has been on the Blitz for a while. And Paul wants a laptop, so I'll clear that one off and he can use mine and I'll use the new one. So it's fine. Um, so that's coming Saturday. So I'll show you that when it comes. We're going out Friday to Tiny Rebel in Rogerstone with Paul's mate. So that'd be nice. I haven't been there before. Don't know what it's like. Um, yeah. So when we're there, I've Jennifer. We'll be out a couple of hours. We're not drinking because I've got to drive, and um, they got to get back to Bridge End because that's where they live. I am now going to try and finish my picture in Zodiac Special. I've just got a little bit to do. I'm doing. Oh, I don't even know where it is. I've probably gone past it. Actually. Yeah, doing this one, which is Cancer. Uh, I've just got the moon and her pearls to do. So I'm going to finish that off. Um, and I'm going to actually use the watercolours for the moon. I'm either going to use the silver or the very pale gold. Dark gold would be too much like her hair. So I'm gonna I might go for the light gold, I think, and then I can use the silver on the pearls. So, um, but it won't be the paint; it'll be a jelly roll. So I'm gonna go do that now. And um, yeah, you'll probably see see this properly in my wrap up. But uh, I've just got to find what I need. So I'll uh, I'm gonna crack on with that. So I finished that one whip, and now I'm working on my uh, one from Kirby Rosanna's. Imagine Morphia, which is taking forever. I, I picked double, well, they're all double pages, I think, in this one, but I picked this one. And uh, to be honest, it's so big, I get bored doing double pages sometimes, so I have to leave them for a while. So I'd left this one, and I'm just doing some of it now, to try and do a little bit more. So I'm going to be working on this one next, try and get this one done. But because I don't know where my ink tents are, I was going to work in uh, The Beauty of Horror, but the room is such a mess, I just don't know where they are. They might even be downstairs, actually. Um, excuse me, there might be somewhere else in the room. I'll have to have a tidy up tomorrow and have a look because I want to crack on with the two beauty of horrors I've got on the go as well. But actually, even just taking this one is another one that's um, coming down. We'll be making another um, colour and chat. I'll probably make it Friday for it to go up Saturday. And that'll be the last one for the month. Um, that will be finishing off the one uh, in the Hannah Carlson book. Um, but yeah. I thought I'd have a go at this. As you can see, it's, it's nearly done. There's not that much left. There are some bits outstanding, but yeah, it's not that bad. It's, it is nearly there. i just got to finish it off. And, and some of it, it's just me being lazy and not wanting to do it. So I thought I'd have a go at it tonight. So I'm working on this side of the page at the moment. I tend to do bits at a time. So I'm working on um, these leaves now at the moment. So yeah, there's still quite a lot to do on it. Not not horrifically, um, but there's still quite a fair bit to do. So I'm going to just crack on with it really and see. I've got ink on it at the top there, which is a shame, but never mind. That's the problem when you have something hanging around. Next time I do one of these, whichever one it may be, I might not try not to leave it as long. I just find it so intimidating, these books. I've got all of these books really. I quite like that one. That's quite nice. I do find them. All, the, all this stuff is so intimidating. Though obviously, uh, because this is Tutankhamun, I do quite like that. And I'm thinking I could use try my metallic watercolor paints on this. Um, 
on his face and his headdress and then pencils on the rest of it so you know maybe I'll try that on I don't know yet to see I would like to do that one I'm terrified of ruining it though but I know I can get another copy so I got mine in, in the works so like only a fiver so I'm going to uh carry on with it because I would like to actually do one in one of his other books because I've got all the other books as well <laughs> I've got so many books I've got to stop buying them you know that's never going to happen though right pattern books are easy because I, I probably will finish a pattern book next year because I'm doing so many all the time Jade Summer's got a new pattern book out I haven't ordered it yet actually it's colour by number flowers but they're quite good too anyway that's it for now I'm going to do a bit more on this and then call it a night because it's nearly 20 to 10 and I want to get some sleep and I've got a bit of a headache coming so the best thing I can do is give up and go to sleep so I'm going to do a few of these leaves and then I'm going to call it a night so I will see you in the morning bye guys morning guys it is that's funny that's on the right setting um Thursday morning I'm at work um I've started colouring and patterning because the ones I'm trying to whip are double pages to finish so I can't do that I'm going to have space so I'm colouring and patterning but that's okay I'll be whipping the whips later um I did a bit as you saw yesterday and I found my ink tents now so I can carry on doing my um beauty of horror ones as well which is great so what's happening today not a lot picking Jennifer up later coming home got one item to post tomorrow so I do have to go up to the shed and get that and today will be an eBay day, but it will be just stuff that I've already shown you, or, you know, maybe, I can't remember, but I'll maybe show you. Anyway, I better get back to work, so I'll see you later. Hey everyone, it's uh, Thursday evening, I'm in bed, I'm not feeling brilliant. I think it's getting to me now. I don't mind being second house, but I do like to see other things, and I've just learned that someone I went to school with uh, passed away on the 3rd of November, very suddenly. Um, it's one of my friends actually who I used to hang out with um, down another friend's house. There was a group of about five of us we used to hang out together. And she was a couple of months younger than me. I was born in June, she was born in August, I think. Um, so she's only 46. And now I feel even worse. Those are kids who are older than Jennifer. I've lost their mum, and it's really sad. And, I don't know what happened, it was just, it's beyond, I remember how lucky you are, we, you know, we're in unprecedented times and this is somebody I knew, went to school with, hung out with, had laughs with, fun, I've got a ton of photographs of her and now I, she's gone, I mean I haven't spoken to her in years, we were friends on Facebook. But it's it's just very weird. it's just strange to think about it. So I'm I'm in shock at the moment. So I'm gonna head off to bed and and, and go to sleep. So I mean she's not the first of my year school year to die. There's a few of them have gone now. Um, and yeah, I feel a bit a bit sad a bit. I don't go onto Facebook that often. I do look at it, but I hadn't seen anything, and they, was, they must have had a funeral today. And uh, so they were posted about saying goodbye. I hadn't known. Um, it's the first I've heard of it was today. So, but like I said, it's not the first of my school year to die. So, and it's always a shock, and it's always really sad. And I'm, I, I don't know what else to say. So I'm just gonna be. I'm just going to call it night and go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. We are going out and I will take you with me. So I hope I can uh, have a good time. I think I deserve a, a nice meal out. So I'll see you tomorrow. Hi guys, it's Andrea. It is Friday night. I haven't vlogged today. I've got a cold and I'm losing my voice. I'm not going out. Um, I've just got to go and get my brush my hair. I'm actually wearing a colour called Kiss Me Coral Lipstick which is a renamed something from the 60s. It was a colour that was out in the 60s, but it had a different name, it's by Revlon. And it's actually the shade that Marilyn wore in her final and completed film, Something's Got to Give. I can't remember what it used to be called. Somebody will probably leave a message down below to let me know. 
And because of that, I'm also wearing my Chanel number five. I've got to go because I've got to get Jennifer ready. And I'll brush my hair. Back from Tiny Rebel now with the madam. What's that, Jennifer? It's just a piece of paper, Jennifer, with a shopping list on it from last week or the week before. Yeah, I like shop. It's all right. I get a notification from Amazon that they've delivered my laptop. I get home. Obviously no laptop because I wasn't here. No card for the door to say which neighbour it's gone to, if at all. It's really annoying. I know one neighbour hasn't got it because I've tried them. The other neighbour doesn't appear to be in. So now I'm going to be fretting all night that the laptop's gone missing. So I'm really annoyed at Amazon for this and I will be complaining. Anyway, I will see you later. So, my laptop is here. Paul brought it in earlier. Apparently he told me but I didn't hear him. So here it is. I haven't set it up yet. I'm too tired because I'm suffering with this cold and I'm going to go to bed now. It's not even nine o'clock. I don't, don't even know what time it is. It's 25 to two. I was going to film um, tonight um, but my throat's too sore to do too much talking so I'm going to knock it on the head now. Hopefully I feel a bit better tomorrow and we can do some something. I don't know what. Anyway, I'll uh, show you the laptop when it's up and running tomorrow. Bye guys. Hey everyone, it is Saturday and it's Saturday night. I'm going to admit, I haven't vlogged today. Um, cold, I felt, well, didn't sleep very well, no, but I felt dreadful all day. And I'll be honest, I've spent most of the day in bed. To be fair, Paul's been brilliant. He's been doing the old jobs, fixing things around the house if needed doing. Like the letterbox, door handle in the bedroom, um, kitchen drawer, among other things. He's been amazing looking after Jennifer while I've, I've been resting I'm starting to feel a bit better so I've got a bit of a headache at the moment but that's fine it's not a bad one so I'm hoping tonight to do a bit of filming and then hopefully get back to bed back to normal I can't even speak see tomorrow so I've set my laptop up I've already broken the charger but that's a long story I'm not gonna even worry about it but it's fine bored another one it was a very thin pin so i'm just going to, have to be careful to wear a store i'm going to leave it upstairs and use the other one down here for other things or pool will have most of it i will see you tomorrow i'm not going to do anything today i'm literally just going to do a few films uh filming today for my current book uh, christmas collection as it stands at the moment do my haul for this month and a couple of flip throughs and that's it and then tomorrow i'll film a coloring chat and then hopefully i'll be able to get back to ebay because of course being ill i haven't been doing anything at all and i'm gonna have a shower so i am actually watching season two of ghosts um I just started watching them the other, a few days ago, so I'm watching that now. So yay! I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Sunday. We're about to go shopping. Here's Jennifer. You saying hello. Hi. Got my cool Marilyn T-shirt on today. Look, happy birthday. You like Marilyn? Yeah. Like saying hello, don't you? So we're going to go shopping. Anyway, better crack on. See you in a bit. Been to the shops and now Jennifer's going to feed the ducks, aren't you, Jennifer? We've got some bickies. Here they come. They're not silly. There's one. There they come. Here comes the duckies. Go! Okay. Ducky had one. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Quack, 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 quack. Ow. <coughs> My turn. Poor duck. We might have had enough food today, you don't know. We come back up later and see. Oh, Daddy! 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 Where are going, aren't they? We come back later on, have a pint. And then we come back and see if the duck's in there. Yeah! Go! Don't throw any more. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh. They come back and eat it. When they're hungry, they've got their dinner out, right? 
Oh, there we are. Come on, let's go to the pub and then we'll come back and see them later, all right? Time for a drink. Jennifer has decided she wants to have a little run around because there's a couple of girls running around. So we're going to be talking to my dad in a minute because there's two bits of Bristol related news that have happened in the last couple of days. The first piece is that um, Bristol Zoo is closing its doors at its current location at Clifton after 185 years. Um, and they're moving to a site near Cribs Causeway. Um, at the moment Bristol Zoo has two sites. It has the Clifton site and it has a site in, near Cribs called the Wildlife Project. Now the Wildlife Project has a much bigger space. <laughs> Clifton site is only 12 acres so it's not really big enough for the breeding program that they run. Um, so what they're doing is they're going to be moving Bristol Zoo Gardens officially to the Wildlife Project which is 126 acres which can only be good for the animals. So they do breed a lot of animals there and um, to try and uh, you know, the ones that are uh, at risk, particularly. Um, and my dad's got a lot of memories of Bristol Zoo that are fascinating um, because he knew the head keeper there for a while, Bert Jones. And the second piece of news is that Bristol Ledge, Bristol legend, Dave Krause, Darth Vader himself, has passed away at the age of 85. Now, my mum and dad both knew David Krause and we'll see if we can get some memories from him in a minute before uh, we go home. Of course at the moment he's running around with Jennifer so it's very difficult. There's Jad and Jennifer. I've got to take one. That's right, you eat the crisps and Grandad's going to tell us all about Bristol Zoo. Can't reach. There. Oh, there's a nasty cough. There's a nasty cough. Yeah, she has got a nasty cough. I'm all wet. You got all wet. You got all wet on your arm, haven't you? How do you get wet on your arms? Out of your bottle? Yeah. Yeah. So, Dad. What? Bert Jones and Bristol Zoo. Bristol Zoo is moving over to um, 126 acres at Cribs Causeway, which they own. Yeah, it's a long way to go. Better for the animals, though, isn't it? Bigger space for them. Yeah. Compared to the 12 acres at Clifton. Yeah, well, he tried to move into the Bristol Downs. Yeah. Years and yeah. years ago, several times. But as it's the property of the people of Bristol, even though they wanted it, the councillors the didn't. Council overruled them. People don't like the council the in Bristol. Councils usually do. Yeah. <coughs> so, so who was Bert Jones? He was a relation of a relation of mine. He was one of the keepers at the zoo. Not, I think he ended up head keeper. Mm. It's a long time ago. But, but when me and Paul went, there was a picture of him up in the, um, yeah, the display. He yeah. was there for years. Mm, so many years. Mm, and yeah. I used to, um, when I used to go over there, I used to take a specially heated dinner sometimes <laughs> from where my aunt lived. For, just for him. Yeah. And I used to go in the green door at the back where they took the animal, the food stuffs and that, and I just knock on the door and they let me in. <laughs> didn't have to pay. That'd be wonderful to have been that. Well, that must have been amazing, though. Oh, no. But it was normal to you, obviously, but, you know. Hey. Yeah. And what would you do at the zoo, Dad? Alfred. 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 Get mother with a London one. Mm. Yeah, guy with a yeah. I used to get him a banana mm. in my hand. The, there's a special place yeah. at the back where they used to feed the animals. And, and you had to be careful with Alfred there, because he was... A barrier there. Mm. I used to be on the barrier yeah. with, with Bert. Mm. But Bert, Bert had his thumb yeah. bitten off by yeah. Alfred. So you have to be careful with him, he was obviously a wild animal. You yeah. went to give him some to the other, he was a bit excited. Got excited, which is understandable. But he was a he was lovely old thing, proper, proper silverback. But he, um, he, he knew me, obviously, because I used to work day, sometimes seven days a week for you know, school holidays. And, uh, hard to meet. He died when a jet flew really low over the zoo and he was getting old. Yeah. And he had a heart attack. Aww. Uh, despite all the stories he tell you, that's what happened. And 
it was great, great shame, really. But the other one, it was Rosie the Elephant. Usually give rides. I never never went on a camel. They had camels there as well. Yeah. All gone now. All gone now. But that was... Uh, <laughs> with Rosie, I got she got to know me so well, because I was there and I used to feed her regularly, that when I went in, she picked me up and put me on her, put me on her back. <laughs> uh, that was before she had the... The thing. Yeah. That was with her trunk, wasn't it? She'd put her trunk around your waist. This is weird. She'd have to walk round, but she walked walk by the rickkeeper. Down the ground for exercise. And I sat up and she walked around. Uh, never had a photograph of that, unfortunately. No. Didn't some kids see that and want it to happen to them or something? Yeah, children, yeah. A couple of children, other children came there and they wanted to know why I could be, I was up there doing that. And mm. they, could, they got in a bit early, obviously. But um, the, the keeper said you can't do that. He's just Rosie's friend, so mm -hmm. she's known him a long time since he was a child, small baby. Yeah. And uh, when she was in her pen, as soon as I walked in, she was a trumpet. And oh, right, come right over to me. And love her. <laughs> and put her trunk out. She probably looked forward to seeing you. She'd give her an apple or, or whatever. Hmm. Um, Squirted me all over the water once. <laughs> you know, I, was up, I was up there fairly early, obviously, they weren't open when I used to go most of the time. And uh, <clears throat> she saw me coming and she was a bit excited because she got excited. And yeah. She'd come over and put her trunk out. Uh, like she did with the, with the rest of the keepers, you know. Yeah. And um, she squirted water all over me over the trunk. Oh, lover. She was lovely all around, she was. But, oh, uh, good times. Yeah, they were great times. So we're going to try and go over before they close it, yeah? If you want. Yeah, yeah we'll take Jennifer over and we'll then go over and see the new one when it, when it opens in 2022. So hopefully next summer we'll try and go during term time when it's going to be quieter for parking because obviously the parking is atrocious. Got to get there nice and early. Yeah, and um, yeah. before it closes, we'll, we'll go one last time to uh, the Clifton site and then we'll visit it at the new site when it opens. Right. Uh, Bristol Zoo memory. Here we are Dad. There you go, you're on camera. Okay. It's for my vlog. And then of course Dave Prowse died at the age of 85. Yes. Yeah, Best known for that. Dave Mine, he was never, for Darth Vader's. I know he was fit and hearty and, and a weightlifter, weightlifter bodybuilder. Was. Yeah. Was weightlifter. Yeah. But yeah. A specific yeah. one, wasn't it? Yes it was, yeah. Uh, but uh, he was the Bouncer at the uh, Glen. Glen, which used to be a dance hall in Bristol, it's now a hospital. It's where Richard Hammond went after his accident, isn't it? The, the yeah. Spire, Glen. Yeah, lots of people. But he was, um, I saw him dumped on his backside by a bloke half his size once. <laughs> <laughs> in the club, he caught him by surprise. And I got thrown out of there bounce by him. Just caught on me by the collar and that was it. That was it. And it wasn't even me. I wasn't even doing it. <laughs> For once. <laughs> For once. He was having a bit of an argument. A couple of people there, and I happened to be in the mood in the group. For some reason, he picked on me. Probably because I was small. He chucked us out. And the other time <clears throat> was he told me to put a tie on. <laughs> you get a tie for. Uh, I think it was 10 shillings, 50 pence. Yeah. And you took it back and you got your money got back. Got your money back, yeah. It was just a rented thing they used to do. So you had to have a tie on when you went in. Because nobody had a mind when he come out. Come out, no. But, uh, yes, I was with him. He was okay. My wife knew him better than I did. And she knew him quite a lot. I didn't. I didn't know Mum knew him better than you did. Yeah. Oh, or was it Catherine? Oh, the yeah, other one. Mum, Mum. She went to Glen Paramore. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, of course she did, yeah, yeah. Uh, Were you there when he was temping bowling? Was that with you and Mum, or was that just Mum on her own? Or? That was with Mum with some of her friends. Some of her friends, yeah. And her boyfriend, I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, he was having a good temping bowling, Harry, in the Bristol, then, in the centre of Bristol. Yeah, no. Great. But we'll do all Bristol memories at some point. And we'll do them all now because we want to actually go to Bristol and see some of it. Born there 80 years ago, 80 years ago. 80 years ago on Christmas Eve. But uh, we used to have some fun. It was great. 
I can tell you stories about the 50s and 60s. But well, we want those, but no, not right this minute when can't, she's here. Can't have those. <laughs> children might be. Some of them. Some of them we can have, but not all of them. Actually, the, my videos aren't for children, they are for adults. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so there's a little bit of memories about uh, David Prowse. Apparently, he temping bowled barefoot, Mum said, because of his corns. Yeah, you're always bad at feet. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody said if you stamp on his foot. You, that was it, you could do him. You, you could, um, could sort him out. You'd have an advantage, you wouldn't say do him because he was a big lad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Nice bloke though. And as he said, his, his, his favourite job was actually being the Green Cross code man because yeah, he helped he lots that. of children cross the road and that was his favourite job that he ever did. I think mean, that's a lovely story. He loved that. And um, so Dave Prowse, yeah, rest in peace he old was, David. He was in as well. He's supposed to have been in a lot of things, wasn't he? Of course uh, he, he, he was, coached was, Superman, didn't he? He coached Christopher Reeve. When he was in Callan, it was only a bit part. Hmm. But he, um, I forget who the, 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 the boss was in it, but he called him in. Edward Woodward <laughs> was Callan, wasn't he? Yeah, that was Callan himself. That was Callan, the, the, the character. The, the, his boss. All oh, right, yeah, I've, I've not seen them. Mum's got them on DVD. We got them, I hope. And I bought them for Mum. <laughs> He, he was taught to he was taught to chuck Callan out, oh. and Callan thumped him. And we love Edward him. Woodward, mind, don't we? Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's like you, Cary Grant. Yeah. I love Cary Grant. <laughs> we'll do Cary Grant another day. Yeah. We'll do Cary Grant another day. <laughs> no, lots of stories about. And Diana Dawes, we'll, we'll talk about her another day. And yeah. <laughs> As you can tell, my dad's got lots of great memories of the 50, well, the 50s and 60s, because, you know, he was born in 1940. Uh, I want to get a lot of them on, on camera. I don't want them lost when you, you do finally pass, because I think that would be such a shame. And it'd be a shame for Jennifer never to hear these, because she's too young for them at the there's moment. But there's a different world in those days. Well, everywhere was different in those days, weren't you know, they? So. Uh, they talk about having worries about the virus now. But we were told week in, week out, day after day, that we had four minutes to live if they dropped the atom bomb. Yeah. So if they dropped the atom bomb, it was a... Totally stories from the government, so it's a way of controlling. Yeah, like the viruses, possibly, yeah. But uh, it did the opposite, because the 50s and 60s, the late 50s and, and the 60s were the era of rock and roll. Let your air down. Everybody enjoyed themselves. All right, the boys chased the girls and the girls got caught. Maybe it was the first era where people actually did enjoy themselves. Well, it was... Mm, it was the 40s, 50s. The war finished in... I don't know, 45, but it was the 50s before yeah. it was really opening up. Yeah. I mean, I, I was buttering then, and if 1954 was chocolate uh, meat went off, but they went off, the chicken ration went off earlier than that, mm. but they put it back on. All right, go and have a look at her. We'll come back to this in a minute. Yeah, where are you going? Jen's run off. Jennifer! 40s, 50s. 50s. Yeah, the 40s were tough, I mean, let's, let's be honest. Oh, you were talking about uh, sugar went off ration quite early, it was 54. It went on and then it went back on. Because yeah. Went... You wet them all, Jen? It's my crisp. You greedy girl. Yeah. But the, um... They still pop now. Yeah. No, they're not the same as they used to be. But, um... Meat went off ration in late 54 because we said we were still picking up ration books in 55 mm. when I was doing it and I was pushing or learning <laughs> but you got this later on when, when these, the Russians got the atom bomb and you started worrying about it we didn't worry about it we were too young and we had great times great fun mm. it was a way of relaxing and a way of getting over it we didn't but like today, everybody seems to be suffering with nerves and can't cope. They should have tried coping in the 40s and 50s. <laughs> they didn't know what it was like then. I, I know some people have said that um, people are moaning about having to, to be in lockdown for like a few weeks. And I said, well, imagine living in an attic for two years like Anne Frank did with no, no contact with anybody. It's, like, it's so easy today compared to what it was back then because we've got things like the internet and we can stay in touch that way. I lived in, where well, I lived in, in the edge of Bristol was 
the old Bristol Airport, not where it is now. No, the old one. The old Bristol mm. Airport. Um, I suppose walking across the fields to it, which we did regularly, was a bit less than around a mile, I suppose. Mm. And, uh, of course, the Germans bombed it when we were kids, after the war finished. Jen! Please, I'm watching it. We used to go over, you can't win a race, you're too your small. We used to uh, <coughs> play on the old old air, anti-aircraft sites as oh. kids. There's a big pond, a bomb crater there, called the, it's called the, the new pond. Hmm? Who's gone? Your money's gone again. I've got your money, got Jen. It. I've got it. Mummy got it in her purse. No, you have it when we get home. We'll put it in your... I don't anymore. Put it in your pocket. We'll I put it in your money box. She's been through my purse this week. But uh, <laughs> you lose it when you got it in your pocket. You keep taking hours out. Mm. But um, you to catch newts over there, which is illegal now, of course. Mm. But uh, butterflies used to catch them. But we, as I say, we used to be worn every, every couple of days in the paper at home. Russia got so many atom bombs, America got some atom bombs, we got so many atom bombs. <laughs> and if you, uh, they give you a four minute warning, and stupid advice in those days was hide in the cupboard under the stairs or in one of the old air raid shelves. Yeah, that'd do it, wouldn't it? Some atomic bomb, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So we had that on our mind, of course we did. But it didn't spoil our enjoyment. It, it gave birth to rock and roll. It gave birth to a lot of freedoms for, for young people. Your own air styles. That before it was just what we call a pudding basin cut. Everybody had the same hair type, especially with boys. Uh, I mean, with mice, I mean, there was no toothpaste about, no toothbrushes. These are things. You're well off. You know, we take for granted today, don't we? No carpets, no fridges, no washing machines, nothing like that. No cars. All done by hand. No cars. No cars in the street. Your dad was the first to have a car in the street, wasn't he? Yeah, I mm. was about 15, I think, when he got So it would be about 55, 55, 56. 55, mm. 55, 56, 56, somewhere around there. Yeah. It was the first car in the street. Yeah. And it was 20... Now they're everywhere. 20 odd houses in the we will visit there one day as soon as the pandemic is finished it's, with. Um, it, it just annoys you a little bit today. I mean, I know times are different. And everything's a rush. Yeah. It's all a rush. It is. It's all about money, you know, and stuff like that. But we didn't have any, so we didn't worry about it. It's as simple as that. I started work at £3 a week, mm. which now sounds ridiculous. Yeah. But the manager of a... Um, <coughs> profit of a butcher shop was on twelve pound a week. Mm. A builder like my mum, my dad, was on about ten pound a week. So, <laughs> you know, you, you can't put it, you can't put a perspective right. Yes. <laughs> now it's all about percentages rather than the amount of money you get. But, you know, we uh, we lived through it, got on with it. Nobody really heard about people having panic attacks or anything like that. Not that I knew anyway. But uh, when the sixties come along and rock and roll was here, full swing, we had some great times. <laughs> good, good. Oh, that'll do for today, Dad. Otherwise, you know, we, we 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 use it all up in one. So there's a few memories of Bristol, including the zoo and uh, David Prowse, obviously, and a few other bits and pieces about the war, things that are going on today. If, obviously, if you want to hear more from my dad, because he's got loads of brilliant stories about Diana Dawes. Who else? Anybody else? Oh, Cary Grant. Cary Grant. Cary Grant. Yeah, we know you. Yeah, we'll talk about Cary Grant another day. And of course, um, being told that you look like Billy Fury. Lot of those, and, and lots of very funny stories about when he started butchering and things they got up to in, in Bristol, places they used to go. Hopefully next summer when uh, this is all nonsense is wrapped up and we've got a vaccine and we're all safe, we'll be able to visit Bristol. We plan on going to Bristol Zoo and we, we'll go around with with dad and, and and then we'll visit the wildlife project when it opens there properly in 2022 Christmas. Christmas, yeah and um plan on doing some visiting so we want to visit what was the street you were born in chadley grove, chadley grove. 
<laughs> and um, visit the school you went to. And apparently he was supposed to go to the same school that Cary Grant went to, which is interesting news. Fairfield. Yeah. So that's interesting. So I'm, I want to see all those pieces and places and, and uh, take Jennifer because that'll be fun for her. And <laughs> maybe we'll actually get to ride on the Matthew like we planned to a few years ago. We never did. So we'll try and get that booked up for next year. That'll be a fun one to do, isn't it? Yeah, let's go down to town. Go down. Let's go down there on a uh, 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 Jim Reynolds. Reynolds, she was a uh, pilot. We used to go to the Bristol docks, hmm. down to Avonmouth. Yeah. Well, of course, when that was when the docks were we had ships and all of the world still coming yeah. to Bristol there. And uh, I went down with him a few times, and we took to Avonmouth. Yeah. He's a great guy, he was. No. Oh. And you'd get on the rush of the ships and, you know, farm ships. And the first thing the captain used to say, because you go up on the bridge to show oh. where you were going, I was going away. And he'd, uh, they, Get a bottle of real good quality vodka out. Uh, <laughs> proper Russian vodka. <laughs> Not the stuff you real, buy here. Real stuff. Proper stuff. And, Has uh, she gone? Oh, Alright. Have a swig of that. I've got more of those sorts of stories from my dad. I've got plenty of them. I can to put some more on. I'm going to be filming them anyway because I want them recorded for Jennifer. So. He turns 80 on Christmas Eve, so it's important to get these memories down. I don't want them lost because they're so important. They are, they really are. These are memories of pe real people and real places and hopefully we'll get to visit some of these places um, next summer. You really think about things when there are things going on in the world like this. You think about nothing lasts forever. So we've got to make the most of it and history is just as important as tomorrow. So let's um, get those memories down because you know one day somebody might want to write a book about Bristol and, and some of these memories might be important. So I said he's met Cary Grant, he met Diana Dawes, David Prowse. They said he used to look like Billy Fury. If I can, if I can be bothered, I'll put some photographs in of um, him when he was younger and uh, if not, I'll make that in another video anyway. So, I'll see you soon. We're going to cut it off for now and um, head off home. It's getting a bit chilly and misty, as you can see. And all that, I've got just, you know, just Jay Perry in the background. Yeah. Or Katie Perry, I'm not even sure anymore. Anyway, that's it. Okay, guys, it's Sunday evening. I hope you enjoyed a um, little chat with my dad that I had earlier. Jay and Paul in bed. Paul went to bed early because he's still got this cold thing that I had. I'm watching the last episode of Ghost Season 2 and <coughs> the house, I think it's called West Waterley House and it's in I think Sussex or Surrey, one of those two places. And it's actually owned by Bamba Gascoigne who hosted University Challenge in the 70s and 80s and so on. Um, so that was fascinating. I love finding these things. <laughs> I think you'll say I'm a bit sad but I just like knowing things. So yeah, it's owned by Bamba Gascoigne. Now apparently they have commissioned season three which is awesome and there's supposed to be a Christmas special but because of the pandemic I don't know if it's happening, it hasn't got an air date. Doctor Who Christmas special or winter special has aired its trailer, I haven't seen it yet, I'll try and watch it later upstairs on my phone. Um, but yes, so I am just watching this last episode and then I'm going to go upstairs and film uh, my Catherine chat for uh, the last one of November. I can't believe it's the end of November. I've packed my items. I still got to do my tax return. It's not due until the 31st of January. I, I said I was never going to leave it that long and I have the second year. So but I'll try and do that this week. But that's it for this week really. I'm just going to watch the end of this episode and head off, do my cow and chat and watch some YouTube go to bed. I will see you tomorrow and we'll do it all again. Bye bye.